Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Real Talk with Ben podcast. And if you're new, my name's Ben. And on this podcast, we talk about everything from my ministry here in Hungary to what's going on in the world to really whatever I kind of feel like I want to talk about. So uh, I hope you enjoy. I hope you'll stay tuned past this week. And so I wanted to start out with some announcements. That sounds like I'm in school. Uh, no, but just some things going on. Um, uh, here recently, uh, if you did not get um, my newsletter, or if you didn't see my past video, uh, past couple of videos, um, you, I want to encourage you to head on over to Facebook. Yes, the good old Facebook, and go ahead and in the search bar. You might be able to find it also on my page, but you can type in the search bar "the Bowden Experience," uh, and I'll put the link um, down below. And if you're watching on YouTube, it'll be on the screen. Um, but if you go to that page, it will have my newsletter that I released last Wednesday. And it will also have, uh, as well, it will have, um, uh, it would also have, uh, some videos that I might post as well. I know I posted a workday video, uh, yesterday or two days ago. So that will be on there. Um, and it's just a way for you all to kind of see what's happening here in Hungary, updates, new things that are happening, and also give you ways to pray for uh, myself and for the ministry here at Word of Life Hungary. And so that is that is kind of what's going on. Um, that is kind of what is happening. Uh, nothing too crazy. But I, I, I wanted to talk about today, and, and it's an interesting topic because, you know, this is Passion Week. This is, you know, Easter's this coming Sunday, and there's a lot of different emotions that come with that, um, and there's a lot of different things that um, you you might wonder as as a church as as a body of believers. Um, it's not always easy, um, I think, to uh, go through something hard and then look at the hope that sometimes is there and that we know it's there, but it's sometimes a little harder to, um, I guess, fully understand. And so. I, I wanted to share um, just some, some maybe a little bit of what I've learned uh, here recently uh, through my own devotions, through uh, talking with people, um, but I also wanted to share some words, not only from scripture, but from a little poem that, um, that my, actually it was funny, it was actually from... Uh, my senior year of college, so about two years ago now, um, or a year ago now, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, a year ago, year ago, uh, our, our class chaplain, um, Campbell Bortle, he was our SGA chaplain, and he wrote, um, if I can focus that there, he wrote a little book that was called Faithfully Pursuing a Faithful God. And it wasn't a book, I should say. It was all of his poems that he um that he presented to um, to us after each sermon, and it was really really cool. Um, he wrote one uh, for each sermon they spoke, and one of the ones that I came across um, recently, and I thought kind of fits in this time frame and kind of what's going on in the world, is uh, he he talked about in the sermon Galatians five sixteen through twenty six, and, and I'm going to read that here after I read this poem. But I want you to just hear the words uh, of this poem and and kind of, um, I think maybe it's things that we need to think about uh, as we go into this, this um, special week. Uh, and so, here we go. It's called The Walk. Walk by the Spirit. This is the primary command. This is not a personal effort, but by grace in which we stand. Obedience awakened by Christ in Him abide. His eyes opened on the third day to provide us a chance to walk in tandem stride with his spirit in every way. Be led by the spirit. This is a willingness to go. Is your heart even listening? Have you read this word to know? Is there a place to where he is leading you? Would you follow him to death's final blow? Or do you doubt his faithfulness stands as true? And listen to flesh, call spirit foe. Live by the spirit, you cannot do this on your own. 
It is only by the death of Christ and the resurrection to his throne. The power of the living God resides in our hearts today. What would it look like if we truly did begin to live that way? To see the power that conquered death and hell and raised Christ from soil bed. Come in our lives, defeat our sin, and bear fruit from our dirt instead. Keep in step with the Spirit, it is daily. It is constant, it will grow. Sanctification is a process evident in your life to show. Surrender to the Spirit's work and walk by Him each day. By intimacy, first and then obedience, may the Spirit have His way. Do not work harder to earn the fruit of man, for it is only of our Lord. Surrender, give in, release your grip from legalism's electric cord. Praise God for the Christ he sent in love to deliver us by crimson hue. Adore and worship, bless his name, Jesus, we love you too. I, oh man, I, that is just such a, it's a great poem. Um, I think, uh... I thank uh, Campbell for doing these uh, every sermon, which now reading these is like, wow, that took a lot of time. But um, yeah, it's it's a poem that I wanted to share because I think in this time, not only with it being Easter, but in this time of, of the virus that has been, uh, it's a pandemic across our world. And I've mentioned this the last couple episodes, it's very easy to get stuck in the idea that we're alone and that what is Christ doing? Because it doesn't make sense. But in reality, Christ is there. One of my favorite lines and favorite paragraphs in this whole poem is this. Is there a place to where he is leading you? Would you follow him to death's final blow? Or do you doubt his faithfulness stands as true and listen to flesh call spirit foe? That's that's my that, I feel like that's kind of, kind of sometimes the way I've been living uh, lately and 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 sometimes when I get caught up into this world into this you know later in the poem he talks about legalism and that that what's happening in this world and I think the the best way to to fully um, understand I guess that poem is is to um, go to God's word. Um, and go to Galatians and, and kind of read what, um, if I can get to it, uh, read what uh, Paul wrote to Galatians. And I am terrible at finding my books. Um, but I, I think what's really cool, and if I can get to it, oh, here we go. Um, so, uh, yeah, going back to what I was saying. I think what's really cool about this is what Paul is talking about to uh, these this group of people, and uh, it's Galatians five sixteen through twenty six. So I'm going to read. I'm reading from the uh, English Standard Version. So in case you read something different, this is what I'm reading. So uh, five sixteen through twenty six, and it says, "But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh, for the desires of the flesh." are against excuse me are against the spirit and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh for these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law now the works of the flesh are evident sexual immorality impurity sensuality idolatry sorcery enmity strife jealousy fits of anger Rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. 
If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. You know, I, I think so heavily on what this, this time means for us Christians. On, an, on a normal year, on a no more normal year, we would have celebrated Palm Sunday on Sunday. We would be getting ready for uh, this, this week. Um, some churches might be doing stuff on Friday. Some might be doing stuff on Thursday, Saturday. But then on Sunday, we get to celebrate. We get to celebrate the resurrection of Christ. That is that is something that is that that we celebrate, but so many times we take for granted. And reading this passage, and I read it this past Sunday for Bible study uh, with the group of guys I'm doing Bible study with, and what stuck out to me was this that. You can't have it both ways. You can't have Christ in one hand and the world in the other and say, oh, I'm going to do a balancing act. You can't have it both ways. It's either, hey, I'm giving my life to Christ or, hey, I'm living in this world. And I'd rather care about those things of this world than of what's going on with my, with my walk with Christ. And I think Campbell, in this poem, pointed out something very key. And the idea that... I, I just love this, this, this another paragraph here, and it's kind of interesting. Uh, I love it because it's this. Surrender to the Spirit's work and walk by Him each day. By intimacy, first, and then obedience, may the Spirit have his way. Do not work harder to earn the fruit of man, for it is only of our Lord. Surrender, give in, release your grip from legalism's electric cord. We're called to release from this world. We're called to let go of what is happening in this world and to say, God, I, I understand. God, I got this. I, I know that you want me to follow you. But yet in so many times I've noticed in my own life that it's so hard to release what's going on in your own life because you would rather have a sense of control than to give all control to God. You know, it's like the book I talked about last week, and Louis Giglio talks about this, the idea of control, and that sometimes you always want control. And, and I'm going to be honest, that's me. I see something, and I, and I love what's happening, and I want that control. I want to be able to have that and say, I want to live it this way. But then when God switched the, switches the flip, flips the switch and says, that's not what's going to happen, I tend to get frustrated to try to figure out it on my own and saying, God, well, I'll come to you if I really, really need you. But in reality, God calls us, and even in Galatians, the, even Paul in Galatians talks about this. He says, he says, this is what he says, for the desires of the flesh are against the spirit and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. There is no give and take. There is no way for us to go, well, shoot. I'll figure this out later. No, it's not you figure this out later. It's in reality, we don't have to figure it out. We go along with what God calls us to do. And, and I think it's so evident even now as, as I'm here serving in Hungary as a missionary, I, I had control. I had 
control of what was going on. I, I felt like, hey, this is what I'm going to be doing this year. This is how I'm going to be serving. This is how I'm going to be loving on these students, on these children of Hungary. And yet in an instant, God said, no, I'm changing your course. And I think so many times I get caught up in trying to go down the course that makes the most sense in my own head when I realize that if God told me what was going on, I wouldn't believe him. And, and, and it's, it's, there's a video I saw on Facebook that was like this Billy Graham, and I'm sure some of you saw it, where he talked about if God told us what he was doing, we wouldn't believe him. We wouldn't believe it. We wouldn't understand what he's doing because we're not God. And if we try to put our, our faith in something else, then of course, we're not going to understand. And, and so I think during this time of, of, you know, difficulty and, and stress and, um, yeah, it, it's, it's one of those things where I think we're, we're all gaining, we're all learning. And it's an interesting time because, uh, here in, um, you know, here in, in this, this world we live in right now, many people don't have hope. Many people don't see hope. In fact, I think many people are saying, what's next? Who do we trust? We can't trust the government. It seems like they're not doing that great of a job or our jobs, we're losing our jobs and left and left and right and left and right. All these crazy turns and all these, the unknowns and it, it, it makes you wonder and it makes you try to figure out what's next. And that's what's so amazing about this time because it allows us as Christians to go, look, I have a hope. The coronavirus will end. The jobs will come back. The economy, economy will bounce back. But I don't trust in the government to do what they're doing. I don't trust in my, my company. I don't trust in my friends. I don't trust in my, in my uh, family. I'm putting my trust in God because God is on the throne. God has not left the throne. God will not leave the throne. Because at the end of the day, God has said this. I don't care what the world says. I don't care that the governments can't figure it out. I don't care that doctors can't figure it out. I figured it out. And I'm going to do what needs to be done when it needs to be done. He's testing us. And in this time of Easter and celebrating the resurrection of Christ, it's very easy to look and say, how can we celebrate something that means so much to us, but we can't be together? What do you mean you can't be together? There was no thing called the church was a building. No, the church is us. How can you celebrate Easter? It's simple. Get your families together. Get a Zoom call, a Skype call. Read an Easter story. I'm sure that's what my mom might do. Celebrate Easter in the new fashion. But yet keeping the same thing the same thing. It's funny. Uh, we were having lunch today and I was, I was, uh, we were sitting there talking and they were talking about doing all these different things for Easter and you know, this vigil where you stay up all night, which I've never done. Um, they talked about other, doing other things that would be awesome to do. And for me, um, for me it was different and I was kind of like, I don't know if I want to do these things. And, and I had to step back and I had to say, wait, 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 wait. There is nothing normal about what's going on right now. But the only thing that is normal is celebrating Christ. And celebrating celebrating what God has done in our lives. You know, Easter is about the death and burial and the resurrection of Christ. And I think it's also about our story. About our testimony. About how when I was a six-year-old boy... I accepted Christ as my personal savior and that through many bumps, bumps and bumps, 
through all of those, after being confused and frustrated and, and not understanding, God was faithful to me. God was allowing me to grow and go through these growth spurts and go through these growing pains because he wanted to say, look, hey, hey, Ben, hey, 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 buddy, you're not in control. That's me. I'm in control. Don't think you're in control. So my question for you guys is this, is are you letting God be in control or are you stuck in the past? Are you stuck in saying, God, I want to try to figure this out. And if I need you, I'll come to you on Sunday or, Hey, I'll, I'll come to you when we have Bible study. Because I'm going to be honest with you personally, I've struggled with that. I've struggled to not just sit where I'm at or go for a walk and just open up and, and cry out to God and say, God, I need you. I need you to be a part of, of my, of my life and be the focus of my life. I'm tired of doing this half on half off. I'm tired of being of the world and, and not serving in it. And I just want to encourage you that this word, God gave us the Bible not to just sit there and to not read it and to not care about what's in there. God gave us that. to grow and to learn about him and to live a life that is honoring to him. I don't know about you, but I've been convicted. I've been running a one man race, at least lately. I've been trying to figure out what's going on in this world by hunkering down and trying to figure it out on my own and saying, I can do this. But when are we going to stop? When are we going to stop looking at what's going on and saying how or why or what's happening and instead going, God, you're in control. How do you use me? How is your walk? In these times, how is your walk in this time, in this week of, of, of celebration. Where is your life? Where is your walk? I beg you to look at your life, to ask those questions. Where are you at? I want to read this, this poem one more time because I, I want you to hear these words. Walk by the Spirit. This is the primary command. This is not a personal effort, but by grace in which we stand. Obedience awakened by Christ in him I abide. His eyes opened on the third day to provide us a chance to walk in tandem stride. With his spirit in every way. Be led by the spirit. This is a willingness to go. Is your heart even listening? Have you read his word to know? Is there a place to where he is leading you? Would you follow him to death's final blow? Or do you doubt his faithfulness? stands as true and listen to flesh call spirit foe live by the spirit you cannot do this on your own it is only by the death of christ and the resurrection to his throne the power of the living god resides in our hearts today what would it look like if we truly did begin to live that way to see the power that conquered death and hell and raised christ from the soil bed Come in our lives, defeat our sin, and bear fruit from our dirt instead. Keep in step with the Spirit. It is daily. It is a constant. It will grow. Sanctification is a process evident in your life to show. Surrender to the Spirit's work and walk by Him each day. By intimacy, first and then obedience. May the Spirit have His way. Do not work harder to earn the fruit of man, for it is only of our Lord. Surrender, give in, release your grip from legalism's electric cord. Praise God for the Christ he sent in love to deliver us from crimson hue. Adore and worship. 
Bless his name. Jesus, we love you too. Christ loves you. Christ truly loves you. And so, I wanted to pour my heart. I want you guys to hear those words. Examine your life. Walk with faith. Trust in the Lord. So, once again, I want to thank you for listening today on the Real Talk with Ben podcast. Uh, if you loved this podcast, if you loved listening to this episode, go ahead and, and you know, star it up on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And then if you're listening on YouTube, thumbs up, subscribe for more episodes and, more, and other videos as well. Um, and I just want to give you one last reminder. Remember, God is faithful and you can trust him. And as always, we'll talk next time. 